Speaking of Disneyland, <laughs> you double dog dared me to talk. I wasn't even going to mention this because it's just so preposterous. And what can you say to flesh it out otherwise than just laughing? But apparently, Joey Ryan, the king of dong style, that's what he was calling himself, right? He was the guy who said, oh, wrestling needs to evolve and adapt. And why are people offended by what I do? Because it's all entertainment. And we're all in this together. And everybody should be allowed to participate and to play and to fulfill their art. And then later on, he, after he was accused of all kinds of shit with all kinds of people from all kinds of people, then he said, oh, golly, I was living like a rock star. I was, I've had a, I bought a big mansion out here in California on all this money I was making, throwing people around wrestling rings with my dick. And I was living like a rock star and I was such a celebrity. He was such a celebrity, Brian, the, the demands on him and the, the people coming to genuflect in his general direction and ask for his autograph. And he was just so, such a star, such a celebrity, such an icon in wrestling that it just, it ran away with him mentally, and that's why he misbehaved and did all these things, and he was going to make himself a better person. That's the last we heard of him, right? Well, apparently, all the money that he made, being this international celebrity and living like a rock star and people genuflecting in his general direction, didn't last but about 18 months, and... He may not have been as big a celebrity and a mainstream superstar as he thought he was because he got hired to work on one of the rides at Disneyland because they had no idea who the fuck he was and they passed his back he passed his background check because they background checked him under his real legitimate legal given Christian name and not his goofy outlaw mud show wrestling name because he was such a big superstar and internationally known that they had no idea that he'd ever been a public figure before and he was just some schlub that wanted to run the fucking ride and wear the safari hat and so he worked there for about three weeks until somebody the one wrestling fan left in probably in Southern California that might recognize him, took a picture of him at the ride and it went viral for everybody laughing at here's dick boys running the ride at Disneyland and the Disney people apologized and fired him. Let that be a moral to the story, ladies and gentlemen, when you're an internationally known celebrity and a superstar and you live like a rock star and living like a rock star means you have to become, as they say across the pond, a sex pest and annoy women and attack women and assault women, all while telling people who have been in the wrestling business longer than you've been alive how they need to modify their behavior. Hey, dipshit, you ain't tall enough to work on the ride at Disneyland either, are you? <laughs> what do you think his next step is? Is it going to be Skid Row? Is it going to be the Boulevard of Broken Dreams? Are we going to see a picture of him laying in an alley, broke, busted, and disgusted with a whiskey bottle in his back pocket? All because since when they took away his rock star celebrity and he couldn't work at Disney anymore, he had nothing left. What do you think, Brian? I don't know. And, you know, we didn't talk about this story when it first popped up because the photo emerged. And it was something, seeing him with what I'm assuming is a blonde wig, and his beard was dyed blonde, and he was wearing his crocodile hunter outfit. <laughs> and, you know, some fan saw him, took a picture online, and it immediately went viral. And I do have a question that comes out of this, and it's a weird one, because I certainly am no fan of Joey Ryan, and what he was accused of was rape. So if that's the case, fuck that guy. But in general, when these people are ostracized from wrestling, or whatever it may be, is the expectation that they never work again? <laughs> you know, maybe it's not a good idea if you're someone who is accused of what he did and was so public 
Probably not a good idea being out there in the public in front of people like that. But that's kind of the question. What kind of future? And it's not just Joey Ryan. There were other guys that were that are now cast offs so of the wrestling business, but they had fans. And it may be a few thousand. It may be more than that in some cases. They had fans. They had YouTube videos that did great numbers. People have seen them. They're going to be seen again. Beyond wrestling, what kind of comeback for life is there from all this? Well, well, tell them. And again, not taking any of their sides because that heinous shit needs to go and the people who did that in my eyes need to go, but where do they go? Well, they probably shouldn't go to a children's amusement park after they've been accused of sexual crimes. I think that was what the, the ridiculousness and the preposterosity of the thing is probably if you there's Joey Ryan looking or working as a used car salesman that probably you know nobody would have ah yeah there he is yeah he still looks the same still looks like a fucking half baked br brown and serve roll covered in pubic hair but to be at Disneyland the happiest place in the world the children's place and also does this man have no other skill whatsoever he can't be a real estate agent. He can't sell used cars or even new cars. He can't get a job in an office somewhere that um, that does background checks. But again, you, if you don't have to deal with the public, he's not been convicted of a crime. So I think it was the fact that, if, you know, if if this was an insurance agency and he was some guy in a cubicle somewhere i don't know that he would flunk a background check because he may, well he may have been accused of a crime but he was not charged with a crime he's not been convicted of a crime that we're aware of i didn't run his rap sheet but in this instance i mean but when you an amusement park where here's all the children and here's this guy who used to fucking wear speedos and make people grab his dick and throw them around by it that should have been a red flag that probably, to him, maybe I shouldn't apply for this particular job. And isn't that mostly the domain of, of high school and college kids who are still trying to figure out what they want to do with their life and career instead of a fucking 40-something-year-old man? Is that what you that is for? I'll get a job over at Disney running a ride. That is balls. I mean, it, again... He had YouTube videos that, because of the ridiculousness of it, got a lot of views. And that was one of the things that was so embarrassing about him doing this was that people were seeing it. People saw him. People know who he is. The idea that he got a job in the public, like you said, a kid's amusement park. Remember, there was that tweet of him with the basket around his crotch? Yes. And he said, I have Easter eggs for all the kids? Yeah, Same guy. Just reach right in. Yeah. But see, that's the thing. They think, and that's the problem with the whole, the AEW bubble now and before it was an indie wrestling bubble. Because they get such strong, positive feedback from the, the indie wrestling fans that everybody involved thinks suddenly they're bigger than they are. Oh, the Young Bucks were so huge, and this guy's so huge, and Pockets is so huge. The average person has no idea these people exist or anything about their backstories or lives. If you'd have said to Disney, yeah, that guy right there used to be the wrestler, Joey Ryan. They'd have gone, who? It's not like it used to be. It's not like everybody knows Steve Austin, The Rock, The Undertaker, or in the territory days, depending on what, you know, part of the country you were in, Bruno or Dusty or Von Erich, whatever the case. These guys literally and girls in this indie wrestling bubble over the last 10 years because they get the constant feedback from the constant crowd that supports that constant tomfoolery, they think they're over. And then Tony Khan comes along and says, okay, these fucking yahoos, the Hardly Boys and Twinkle Toes, they have a built-in audience that will live and die with them and travel forever to wherever to see them. So I'll start a promotion around them. But then you find out it's the same people 
that's going everywhere. It's not like there's a bunch of them in New York and a bunch of them in Chicago and a bunch of them in every town. It's the same fucking people going everywhere. But the, that's the point, is they have convinced themselves. Jimmy Havoc, remember him? He went from king of the death matches to selling, to delivering pizza, not even selling it, just delivering it. He had looked like a goddamn softball with all the fucking stitches on his head. Weird, freaky-looking, fucking half-head-shaved, pale, fishy-white goof. But they are, whether it's him, whether it's this guy, whether it's Pockets, whether it was the Hardly Boys, whether it's Danhausen now, whether it's any one of these gimmicks, they are allowed to do something that makes no sense, that pisses all over the wrestling business, and honestly, logically runs off your mainstream viewing audience but because a tiny handful of people find it so preposterously funny or entertaining or they like to laugh at the business or whatever, they're the ones over there screaming, oh, we want more of this, want more of this. So each one of these guys gets their moment in the sun, the new hot indie darling, whether it's the hot indie gimmick or the hot indie spot doer or the hot indie flyer or the hot indie brawler, and it lasts six months to a year to 18 months. Got to give it to Pockets. National TV has stretched his one note out for about three years. But it's just goofiness. And these people, they end up thinking that they are rock stars, like Joey Ryan said, and they act like it. And then three years later, it's, you know, where are they now? Nobody knows because nobody gives a shit. Joke's over. Yeah, you know, it's funny, too, because everyone likes to pretend like the wrestling business is such a different animal today than it ever was before. They don't have the kind of dirt bags in it today that were there before. <laughs> and you see, it's the same thing. In terms of the worst people, they're people that can only survive in the wrestling business and can't survive in any other industry or any other line of work. This is it. And there are still guys like that. And you mentioned two of them with Joey Ryan and Jimmy Havoc. What we're, we're going to talk about later on with uh, Greg Oliver, who, sh who we should plug, is going to be on to talk about his blockbuster article on SportsIllustrated.com just this week about Rocky Johnson. But, you know, it, it, nothing changes because people people's basic human nature doesn't change. And there's always going to be people that are going to do stupid shit, and there's always going to be people that are going to do smart shit because there's always going to be stupid and smart people. Generally more of the first than the second. And so just because there were more professional wrestlers in the territory days than in the old days than there are now, uh, everybody think, oh, it used to be such a horrible business, but like you said, now we've cleaned it up. No, it's just different kinds of dirt bags and probably fewer of them because there's fewer wrestlers overall by a large margin. But People don't change. You're always going to find brand new assholes. They just may not find jobs. They just may not find jobs. And golly gee, you know, if, if Joey Ryan had had any talent for the wrestling business and tried to, well, I guess he did try to get over the right way. And he didn't because he didn't have any talent. And then that's when he decided to throw people around with his dick. And then he gets over for two years and then everybody finds out he's an asshole, and now he's fired from Disneyland. Eh. But he wanted me to modify my behavior. You know what, Brian? I'm telling you right now. I think that I just had a good idea. What about if Joey Ryan was a used car salesman? But here's the problem. Would you believe Joey Ryan if he told you something? Because he's a noted liar and prevaricator and you got to be able to believe the salesman so maybe maybe joey ryan should be an auto mechanic what do you think that way well, if you're under the car no one sees you yeah exactly you're covered in the oil and the grease you're under the car they only see your feet but you know what those auto mechanics they're shady too because they'll overcharge you you've heard this a million times Auto mechanics, people with the auto parts stores, they want to overcharge. They want to jack the prices up. They want to soak you and bilk you. 
That's why it's always best, folks. If your car is broken down, if something's not working on your motorcycle or your boat or your unicycle or your helicopter, or even the, the Brian copter that you keep out back of last manor, if something's the matter, don't take it to a crooked repairman. Don't go to a crooked brick and mortar parts store. You got to do the work yourself. And it's so easy when you get all the parts from our friends at rockauto.com. You do not have to look at Joey Ryan laying prostate on the floor in front of you, face up underneath your 69 Chevy. No, you don't. Because now you can be under that 69 Chevy. You can be face up, face down. You can take any fucking position you want to take with that 69 Chevy, but you're going to save money because you're doing the work yourself with the parts you got from rockauto.com. You, if you repair and maintain your cars, you save money for important things like mortgage and food and tickets to Disneyland. Why in the world would you want to spend 30%, 50%, 100% more for the exact same auto part at a chain store or a new car dealership? Those new car dealerships, they are noted for jacking the prices up. You try to get a whammy bar on a Framistat, see how much it's going to cost you. But at rockauto.com, it's a family business. They've been serving auto parts customers online for 20 years. Brian, has there been an online for 20 years now? Oh, at least, yes, and maybe 35 years or so. Well, then they got started late, didn't they? They only started 20 years ago because that's why they were trying to do it right. They took their time and they got their plans together. And we mentioned that rockauto.com is not a brick and mortar store. No, instead, it's a magical place on a South Sea Island made all of glass and plastic. And they've got all the parts lined up there. And whether it's for your classic car or your daily driver, a few easy clicks will get everything you need and delivered directly to your door. And then once the mailman shows up with it, kick him in the nuts, take the package, slam the door in his face and get to work and put this part on your car or truck and then... Drive out in the front yard and run that mailman over as he's getting up off the sidewalk. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck and write JCE in their How Did You Hear About Us box so they know we sent you because rockauto.com is just like Hulk Hogan's Beat Shop and Ron Howard. They want to know who's sending people to their door. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts, your vehicle. We'll ever need rockauto.com.